Thank you so much, Zaid. And thank you, Mark Brooks. That was very cool. I hope you guys are well. You're happy. Guys, this is our last day. So please use, please use all the platforms that we have for you guys. Make sure you're going out there and you're buying um, from the different exhibitors. We need your support. And yeah, this, the, the website is only up until the end of today. Tomorrow, you won't be able to buy anything. Um, and we're on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and of course, YouTube. Next up, we have an interview with Lee B. Welcome to Comic-Con Online. Uh, we have the privilege of interviewing the legendary Lee Vermeu. He is an American comic book writer and artist whose published work includes interior illustrations and cover art. Most notable work is Batman Noel, Joker, uh, Batman Dan that we all know so well, and most recently, Detective Comics, which you can get at your local retailers. Um, just before we just jump into it, Lee, thank you and welcome. And we want to um, just shout out to uh, Scott's Collectibles for arranging this interview. And we really appreciate your time. No, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I'm sorry I can't be there uh, in person. No one can be there in person this year. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, hopefully, hopefully at some point I can, I can, uh, I can actually attend the convention. It would be, it would be amazing. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. No, our, our pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, and we definitely would love to have you in the next coming year. As soon as we're all able to travel again, um, we'll definitely be, be, be you're more than welcome to, to come down and join us for Comic Con Africa. So, um, what we did was we reached out to some of our fans and we asked them for a couple of questions. So, I'm just going to shoot you with those questions and then we can just proceed from there. So the first question is from Johan van der Westeisen. He's asking that your Rorschach, uh, Rorschach is probably the darkest and most realistic version ever portrayed in modern era. What inspired you to draw him in the way you did? Did you go with your understanding of the character or was it pure gut instinct on how you wanted to show him to your readers? Um... I think that we both, that Brian and I both wanted to kind of go back and, and really visit where we felt like a lot of that character came from, you know, which was um, the Steve Ditko uh, character, uh, I believe Mr. A, and, um, and also obviously Taxi Driver, which was, which was clearly a huge influence on, on Moore, you know, the, the journalizing and stuff that he does. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't want to do, Watchmen is this incredibly intricate and complex, uh, multi-layered narrative, right? With multiple characters and, and um, neither one of us wanted to make any attempt at all of trying that same thing. We wanted a very simple story that was like a grindhouse movie from the 70s. You know, we wanted it to feel a little extreme, a little exaggerated. Hence the, you know, villain who's like a disco dancer and has a big white tiger, you know? Um, so, so we, we definitely wanted it to be dark and, and, and in tone with the, with the character, but, um, I personally was really interested in doing something that wasn't going to in any way feel like, um, like it was attempting to do what they did with Watchmen. Cause I think that's a, a fool's game. It's just, it's a perfect book for what it is. And I'm a huge fan of it. Um, and so we just wanted to kind of take the impetus of that character and, and, and go from there. And, um, you know, hence the, the cameo, the Travis Bickle cameo in there yeah. as well. So, so uh, yeah, that was, okay. that was what we were trying to do. Okay, fantastic. Second question is from Megan Humphreys. Um, how did you go about learning your art foundations and getting to the level that uh, you are now at? That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I'm not formally trained. Uh, I never attended art school. Um, but I was, however, an intern at Wildstorm Studios, which was Jim Lee's studio yep. back in Image Comics days in San Diego, California. And um, I had the good fortune of, of being hired there as an intern. So um, what they did was they brought kind of younger guys like 19, 20, um, that they thought had promise and, and that, that you moved to San Diego, they put you up in an apartment 
and um, they paid you very little, <laughs> but you came into work every day and you just learned, learned the craft. And it was, it was um, a bunch of us young guys like uh, Carlos Dianda, who did all the Arkham uh, game designs. He was there at the time. Uh, Javon Kirby, Ali Garza. Um, they, we were all kind of the younger crew there. Um, and then there were older guys like obviously Jeff Campbell and Ryan Benjamin. Yeah. At the time, Travis Sheree was there for a little while, but you know they were very much of a different generation than us. So um, we just wound up learning the younger guys. We just kind of wound up learning from each other. I think that because there wasn't really access to um, Jim or you know any of the more established artists, they were off doing their thing. Um, we were just kind of left to explore and it was kind of like an art school. So that really was like a foundational uh, learning experience for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and everybody was good at something different. So like Javon Kirby was amazing <clears throat> in anatomy. And so I learned a lot about anatomy from, from him. And Carlos was amazing at, you know, anything that's techno, you know, tech oriented or he was, he was very, um, you know, good at doing anything that was kind of high sci-fi. And so I was just kind of absorbing, you know, like a hedro, like what these guys were doing and trying to figure out a way to implement it while, you know, like trying to follow my own instincts as well in terms of what I wanted to do artistically. Yeah, yeah. So that was, I would say, that, that really is how like I started to develop artistically. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, and then Sinead Edwards is asking, as an artist and a writer for part of our most beloved genre, how do you deal with negative comments or feedback? Do you find that you lose your creativity trying to meet expectations? No, no, no. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm of the opinion that um, everybody likes what you're doing, you're doing something wrong. So I, I think that in order to, to make compelling art, sometimes you have to risk you know, offending. You have to risk, you know, also that people will, will hate what you do or, or extremely dislike it. And, you know, I mean, we live in the, in the age where it's very easy for people to kind of tell you exactly what they think or at least exactly. what they're feeling in that moment. And um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, I, I think that uh, as long as the comments are, are sticking to the art, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's just as good when someone hates it as it is when, when they love it. It means that I'm doing something that um, isn't just strictly kind of down the middle and bland, you know? So, yeah. Okay, That's fantastic. Fun. And then um, Alistair Browns is asking, um, how did you find your unique art style? Because, I mean, you do have a pretty unique style that stands out. Um, it's like, um, for instance, um, you can easily recognize, you know, Jim's work or uh, Jenny Friesen's Wonder Woman, you know. So how did you find your specific unique style? Uh, you know, I think it's a combination of, of things. Um, I, I've always been a very fetishistic artist. And, you know, what I mean by that is not like whips and latex. I, you know, it's I, I, I I follow my, my, um, my, my artistic fetishes. I know what I like to see and what I like to draw. And I, I have a certain, I've always had this kind of certain idea. I, I, um, I like, you know, high contrast lighting. I like fabric. I like, you know, texture. I like this kind of stuff, atmosphere. And so I think all those things kind of, um, you know, m over time you're able technically to, to, to do something <clears> more more of what you want to do, I guess. And it's a combination of, you know, a lot, a lot of different things. It's just, you know, my, my instincts. Um, uh, it's also, I think it, it also has a lot to do with, uh, with just what, what, um, what you artistically can do. I can't do anything other than this, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not the kind of artist that wants to explore a million different things, you know? So I, I'm, it was just kind of following those those artistic fetishes and 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 trying to make sure that um, I serve a story because that's what we do. But at the same time, I have to make sure that I'm satisfying myself. Otherwise, it just isn't fun. So that that's the best 
answer I guess I can give there. Okay, yeah. Now look, I understand completely what you mean. I mean, when when we look at your art, especially, I think it was like a um, you did a, you did, a, did a Spider Man not long ago, and and especially with um, your Batman is extremely unique as well. It's like you almost want to touch the paper. It's like that material that you talked about. I mean, it's almost like there's just something real to it. You know, that, that it's not just like spandex. It's like, this looks like something that Spider-Man would have, you know, Peter Parker would have made or, you know, but that, yeah. So I, I totally get that. But that's fantastic. And then um, lastly, we, well, not lastly, but um, second to last, we've got Kyle Nkosana Sibanda asking, how do you go about planning these composition of your larger panels? Um, you know, it's again, it, it just comes down to a lot of instinct. And I know that's not a great answer for, especially for like a young artist trying to figure out how, how to do with it, what, uh, what professional artists do. But, um, I think that when you are reading a story and you're visualizing that story in your head, and trying to figure out how best to interpret it, or, you know, in, in, in art, there's just images that, that come to your mind. And, and I think those are very hard to shake, you know, like these initial impulses that you have when you first read a, someone's script or, you know, when you first um, hear a, like your, your writer or your, you know, you're developing the story yourself as I've done before too. It's like, there's just certain images that kind of jump out. So those larger panels tend to be these real, um, moments in time that are that are important to the story because you know I, I, because of the way comic book storytelling works the larger the image and the more information on that image it, the more attention your eyes going to spend on it and the more and the longer you're going to look at that at that specific thing so um it really does come down to uh, to being to choosing moments you really want to stick with your with your reader or you really want to have an impact so I think that's, that plays a part, but then, you know, there's page composition and other stuff that, that also comes into play, but really it's the page composition tends to come from that, you know, these instincts. And I, if I know this part of the page needs to be bigger and I, I, it needs to have more attention, I will, um, I will focus on that and develop the rest of the page around that, that image. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. And then um, for me personally, um, you know, you and Brian, you're like the dynamic duo, you know, like Batman and Robin, you know, or Batman and Nightwing. And um, I mean, the stuff that you just do together is just uh, phenomenal. Um, how did it happen with you two joined forces and, and kept on doing these awesome projects together? Uh, Brian and I met because. Um, Back when uh, DC Comics bought Wildstorm, Jim, Jim Lee wanted to do some crossovers with the characters, you know. He did Superman Gen 13, which I also did with, with Adam Hughes. And that turned out okay. I mean, it's, it's you know, um, it wasn't my best work, of, of course, very early stuff, but it, it enabled them to think like, well, we want to do more of this, you know. And um, I wanted to draw a Batman and the the only Wildstorm character that really really appealed to me was the Deathblow, and yeah. and Jim also Jim also I think thought that would be a good kind of pairing of two characters, and um, at that time Brian had just started working. I mean he he was doing a hundred bullets. I think six issues had come out, and he had done a miniseries called Johnny Double with our uh, with Eduardo Rizzo, and I loved both of those things. I mean I was really into hundred bullets at the time, and I thought you know this guy could probably. I mean, I, I, Brian at the time was kind of like Tarantino when Reservoir Dogs came out, you know, people, I think people were kind of like, well, this is a new voice and this is a, a, a very like unique voice for, for yeah, comics. Yeah. And so I thought this is, this, this is someone who can tackle these both in a different way. You know, I, I didn't want to do the typical crossover, you know what I mean? I wasn't interested in, in telling classic kind of stories. Yeah. And so I thought Brian would make a really... Um, unique choice because he would probably come at it from a different way and, and he did and so Jim was really um, responsible for kind of putting us together and uh, and you know it, it's it's been I think 17 years now we've been we've been working together so it's, it's been quite a good um, creative pairing that's fantastic I can cry. I can cry. 
Um, I think, Lee, that's, that's that for today. And I really do appreciate you making time for us. And the fans appreciate that. And we would definitely love to see you in, in the future. Thanks so much again for having me. Um, hope everybody's staying safe, uh, you know, more than anything else. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks.